In this video, we'll talk about follow-up messages which Amazon sellers are sending to their customers. Our guest today is Hanson from FeedbackWiz, which is a software tool to automate your follow-up messages. Hansel will uh, give us an overview of what was happening with follow-up messages in the past and what is happening right now in the last several months when Amazon is implementing different uh, rules and uh, restrictions for follow-up messages. Hanson will also give us an overview of what is the difference when you are trying to acquire reviews using messages and also by clicking request review button in the seller central platform which is provided by Amazon. And finally you will hear some tips on what kind of subject lines to use for your follow-up messages and what to write in the actual message as well. And as always, don't forget to subscribe below to the YouTube channel of Orange Click, click the notification bell, because here we very often talk to different Amazon experts and software providers. Today is a very exciting day, as we have Hansen from Feedback Wiz with us to discuss uh, some of the things related to follow-up emails. So before we start, could you please introduce yourself and uh, let us know how, how do you usually help sellers? Hey, thanks for having me on today. Um, hey everyone, my name is Henson, I'm from Feedback Quiz, and we're a Amazon software company that helps um, sellers improve profits and get more reviews. And today's topic, we're going to discuss a little bit about follow-up emails and the whole buyer-seller messaging communications and getting reviews from your uh, buyers. And there's been some, you know, changes that have been going on for a year or so. And, you know, Amazon is not very good with communication sometimes when they uh, change the rules or the ways they, uh, the way they regulate some of these uh, messages. So I wanted to just kind of give a quick overview and, you know, um, give you guys some insight on what's the best ways to try to get reviews these days through emails. So tell us first, perhaps, why follow-up emails are so important for sellers? Yeah, so I used to sell on Amazon back in uh, 2013, 2014. Um, this is way before Amazon kind of went crazy. And I experienced the, uh, the growth phase of when Amazon started to <clears throat> climb a lot. And back then, yeah, things were very, very different. You know, there wasn't as much competition. Um, it's very easy to be ranked number one. Uh, getting reviews was easy because, you know, you can basically send as many messages as you want to your buyers. And after some time, you know, it's very easy to communicate. But uh, since then, Amazon has implemented a lot of changes, especially in the email side, and they've restricted on, um, you know, how much communication you can have with them and what kind of communication you can have and what's the purpose of the communication. So, yeah, so we can just dive right into it with uh, emails. Basically, for Amazon, you're not supposed to use emails for marketing purposes. So, you know, five, six years ago, you can get away with those kind of things. But now um, Amazon has really implemented uh, very strict rules on how you can send the messages and what kind of messages you can send. So the content you send inside is very important. So a lot of mistakes sellers do, especially the new ones that come on Amazon, they automatically think that I can use emails as a way to, um, you know, basically advertise my product or, you know, incentivize um, buyers to give me good reviews, right? And this is just not the case. You can't use emails for that purpose. The purpose of emails is to, can collect reviews, but you have to do it in the right way, and we'll discuss that. And then the other way, the other uh, purpose is uh, sending them necessary information or getting um, necessary information to complete the order, right? So uh, cases where, let's say you're selling an item where it has to be customized, and maybe the sell, uh, the buyer has to give you them give you some information like a name or address or something, right? In that case, you know you have to communicate with the buyer and those are scenarios where you can contact them for things outside of um, asking for reviews or feedback, right? Um, but the primary purpose of buyer-seller messaging is, you know, the Amazon still allows you to uh, request for reviews or request for feedback and also provide customer support. So you keep, keep in mind, those are the things that you want to use the emails for and not for other purposes. So, um, 
We can quickly go over like things that you shouldn't do. So it's crystal clear what you can use emails for. So when you, when you ask for reviews, specifically, we'll talk about um, sending emails for reviews. Uh, you never want to like compensate them for like giving them a free product or offering them a discount in exchange of review. So you absolutely can't do that. Or you can offer them a refund or reimbursement if they ask you for review or even asking them to uh, remove a review or change a review later on. Right. Um, they've even gotten very strict where the way that you structure your email to ask for review, you can't just uh, ask them, could you, if you had a positive experience, could you leave a review? And if you had an issue, please contact us. So you can't even use those kind of conditional statements. It has to be very neutral and in a, in a way where you're just asking a review like naturally. So, um, you know, one way you can reference is Amazon has a um, automated template they send out through the review request button. And if you read that template, the way that they ask for review, it's extremely neutral and there's no like suggestive language or any type of uh, incentives when, um, you know, they ask for the reviews. Uh, the biggest thing with Amazon that they changed um, the last year or so, and they're really enforcing on is the number of times you can ask for review per order. So it's very important to know that you can only ask uh, review or feedback once per order. So, um, and you can't, so reviews and seller reviews and seller feedback are different, right? So if you're asking for reviews and asking for feedback, you ha if you want to ask for both, you have to combine them in the same email. Um, otherwise you have to just ask for either, or you can't do two separate emails, one for seller feedback and one for reviews. Um, so, that's one of the biggest things they're monitoring right now is like the number of uh, messages you're sending out per order. So if you send out too many messages per order, then you get flagged. Um, okay, so I, what jump, is I, I jump here uh, in, in to ask a question. So if a seller would send uh, a message asking for a review and would later would like to use the request review button, which we will dis discuss later, is that mm -hmm. according to TOS or not? Uh, no, you can't do both. So you have to choose which one you want to use. If you either use buyer seller messaging or use the review request button, you can't, you can't do a combination of both. Um, however, if, um, if you're using buyer seller messaging to uh, send information, like there's a lot of sellers where they have uh, PDF files with product instructions or warranty or, um, you know, necessary information to complete the order and they use buyer seller messaging to send that out in the initial phase of the order. And then later on, you want to use a review request button to ask, that's okay. So you can combine it, but you can't use buyer seller messaging to ask for review and then use the review request button to ask for review. That would be consider asking review twice. So Okay, that's, that. that, that's, that's a good information. And, and how Amazon can uh, punish sellers who, who do something uh, like breaking, breaking those rules? Yeah, so the punishment comes... Um, they have some kind of automatic algorithm, I guess, that scans through your messages or your activity, and they can see, um, you know, if you violate it. And if you violate it, what they do is they usually give you a 30-day uh, suspension. Not, sorry, I don't want to use the wrong word, suspension. It's called a, a proactive message restriction. Suspension just sounds really bad. It's, you're not getting your account suspended. You can still sell. A lot of people, that's the fear. It's like, oh, I'm going to get my account suspended. I can't sell. Like, this is not a suspension. This is a message restriction. So proactive message restriction means you're not allowed to um, send messages to uh, your buyers for 30 days. And that 30 days windows, as soon as it's up, it gets lifted. So you don't even need to call Amazon or contact them. They just automatically remove it. Now, the thing you need to watch out for is that if you get too many of these, um, I've seen some sellers, I think they got like three three, four, or even five of these in a row, right? So some, some of these sellers use tools and they forget to change it, right? And they don't even realize you're getting restricted, right? And a lot of softwares, they don't tell you when your messages are not going through. So they have no idea, right? So, you know, three months down the line, they come back and they figure out, hey, my message, my emails aren't going through. And then suddenly Amazon, um, so there are cases where Amazon does say, hey, you're not allowed to use uh, buyer seller messaging anymore because you keep violating. So it's very important for sellers to keep on top and, um, you know, go inside Seller Central or if they use feedback ways, we send out alerts right away where we start detecting that if you have zero open rates, which means your emails are not going through and 90% of the time zero open rates means that um, you're, you got restricted, 
So that's a big fl- flag right there. And if you get an email from us, then hey, you should go in right away. And you know, you can even email us, and we can help you fix the problem. Um, so you need to stay ahead of that because too many um, too many of these restrictions in a row will get you uh, banned from sending messages completely. Okay, so now we covered the part of asking reviews and asking too many reviews. Are there any other tones that sellers should avoid? Um, in general, not really. I mean, the the best practices I would say is you know if you're sent, if you're using buyer sound messaging. Um, the content you write inside, you just want to keep it friendly, um, short, nothing too long, right? Because the more stuff you write, the more issues that can come up, right? Because sometimes Amazon might not like the way the language is. So you want to kind of come up with something short and direct. And usually short and direct emails that we've seen always have higher conversions because people these days, they don't want to read like an essay, right? They don't have time to read all the, the stuff inside. So you want to be very direct and short and friendly. And sometimes, um, you know, if you say the right messages right away, people react to it and they're, they're able to write you a review. So, yeah, besides that, the, the biggest thing really is, you know, make sure you're only sending one review request per order and nothing more than that. So besides that, you know, nothing else has really changed on Amazon side. Okay, so having only one chance, what are your best suggestions to grab customer retention, uh, let's say with the subject line of the message, do you have any tips for sellers? Yeah, so subject line is still the number one most important, um, you know, element to, for the seller to, or sorry, for the buyer to react to your email, because that's the first thing they see inside their inbox. So with subject lines, you need to have a high open rate because your open rate is too low, then they're not even going to open the email. You're never going to get a review, right? Um, the strategy with subject lines still hasn't changed all over these years. It's a it's a very it's a psychological kind of thing. Like people just react to the subject line, right? If you have a catchy subject line, or if you have a too direct subject line, it can go either way. Sometimes they open it, sometimes they won't. Now, in our studies and you know all the testing we've done, um, the subject lines that get the highest conversion rates are our subject lines are actually, believe it or not, don't have too much information inside. They're very simple, and um, but they contain some keywords, and the keywords are really um, Amazon, right? Something um, order, your order number, right? And something to do with that order. So anything in terms of those three elements and not disclosing any more information than that uh, will you usually yield you the highest subject line, uh, highest open rates. Um, for example, like if I use a subject line that said, um, can you please write a review for this item? Question mark. A lot of people will think, hey, this is a great subject line because I'm being very direct and, you know, people know that what this email is about. But that actually goes the other way because it's too direct. And many times people read that in their inbox. They don't have the time and day or they just don't want to write a review or something. Right. They won't even open the email. Now, the subject lines that we recommend are usually like regarding your Amazon order ID or um, information about your Amazon order, right? And then you can use a, like a tag to automatically populate the order number. So things like that makes it sound like something kind of important with the order, right? With the Amazon order, but it doesn't really give too much detail. So there's a mystery of an el- uh, element of mystery there where the buyers will most likely click to open it. You know, once they open it, that's where you, you know, need to use the other strategies of, you know, templates, colors, logos, whatever, pictures. Um, you know, you have to A-B test it, right? Because every product has different audience, right? Every audience can react differently to different types of messages. So uh, I still really like customized emails because, you know, for some of the bigger sellers, they don't sell just one type of product. They sell like many types, different types of things, right? There's toys and games, supplements, you know, um, outdoor sporting, whatever, they all cater to different demographics of people, right? And every demographic of people, if you really want to nail it down and get the highest conversion, you have to understand like what these people, what kind of messages or well, what kind of words they use that will bring the best reaction out of them. So. So knowing the customer is not only important for optimizing the listing and doing the photos and everything, but it's also important to write follow-up emails that would grab the interest of the customers, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, over the years, follow-up emails have, you know, they're not as effective as they were, you know, three, four years ago, but it's still a free ride, meaning Amazon still allows you to use this to get reviews. It's not easy to get reviews these days, right? So you have to use this to as your advantage. And I mean, if it's automated, you know, once you set it up, you don't really need to do anything, really. You just monitor, like, you know, you can periodically monitor open rates. And let's say your open rates drop, then you can try something else, right? Or if your conversions drop, maybe try a different template. So it's not something that's, like, very cumbersome in terms of selling at Amazon. So you should definitely, um, it's definitely something you should have running. So what do you consider a good uh, open rate for follow-up email? Um, usually you want something above 30%, you yeah, know, 30% and plus higher would be the best, right? And some of these subject lines, if you test over, uh, like the ones I recommended, like regarding your Amazon order ID, I think, um, in general, in our system, we usually see a range of a 35 to 45% open rate. But again, after some time, you know, you might want to change it a little bit because if everyone starts using the same email, then, you know, people start reacting and they start realizing, Hey, this is, I already know this. Right. So you, but I say like variations of, you know, that those three elements I talked about, you want to just change around all the time. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So do you have anything else you would like to share with our viewers? Yeah. Um, we can talk a little bit about this uh, review request ish. Um, integration that Amazon recently launched about, um, I think it was about four or five months ago. And it's, it's a, for people that don't know about it, it's a feature inside your Seller Central, inside your uh, orders. When you go into your orders, uh, for each individual order, there's like this new button on the right that you can click on. And when you click on it, it says re request a review. And what that does is Amazon will automatically ask for a review for you, right? You don't have to use buyer seller messaging anymore. And you know, set up your templates and all that. And this, this message uh, is 100% TOS friendly. So you don't also don't need to worry about getting any message restrictions or things like that. Um, now, the biggest drawback with the review, review request button is that um, like you, you can't customize the, you know, your subject line, you can't customize your template, right? It's the same subject line, same template that every seller is going to send when you use it. You also can't see things like open rates, right? You just Amazon doesn't tell you that. There's no way for anyone to track it. So you can't, the only thing you can really see is that if you use that only and you don't use buyer seller messaging, you can see, hey, have my reviews rate gone up? Has it gone down, right? You can gauge it. And most sellers, um, when this first launched, uh, saw a very positive uh, review um, rate, meaning that a lot of people were actually reacting to it. Which is good because that's the that's the goal of what Amazon wants to do. Um, the whole reason they released this um, was because they wanted to try to stop sellers from sending too many emails, and you know they there's just too much headache with sellers not understanding the rules. So a lot of them getting suspended, things like that. Um, now the other drawback too is that if you uh, send this review request, uh, if you use this feature, um, it's after some time, people will stop reacting to it because it's the same email, right? And then they get the same subject line. So, you know, in the beginning, it's new and fresh. People open it, they react. But then after a while, it's just like how they used to send the seller feedback, right? You saw the conversions drop, 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 keep dropping, right? But the pro is that, hey, you don't have to worry about getting um, any type of suspension there. Yeah. So what do you think, what is the best tactics uh, right now to use? Is it, w would you rather recommend using follow-up email with the review request or, or using the button? Um, it depends on, it depends on where you are, I would say, in the Amazon phase. Um, if you're like a seller that just started off and you don't really want to go through the hassle of, you know, building your emails or let's say you don't have a brand logo, right? Because the biggest advantage of the customized buyer seller messaging emails is that you can throw in things like your logo and your brand, right? And then that gives you extra exposure, right? Um, let's just say you're just selling um, retail arbitrage or you're not, don't really care about reviews that much, but you still need feedback reviews, then it's okay to use because it's simple, right? Once you set it up, um, it, it gives you the same purpose. But 
uh, the bigger sellers that have brands. And like I said, they want to get really increased the reviews, uh, positive reviews. Uh, they would use this feature because um, with the review request button, it's it also can hurt you because if you're requesting a review from every single person, there's a lot of people that have issues, right? Like refunds or returns, right? So you can also, you also notice that a lot of um, your reviews become negative too. You have a lot more negative reviews come in as well. Whereas with uh, buyer seller messaging and, you know, software, you can filter those type of orders out and exclude from sending them. Um, but however, I'll, I will explain later that we actually have a functionality for both now and you can actually use both to your advantage. So it kind of levels the playing field and it's really like up to you on which one you want to use. Okay. Uh, would you like to introduce the tool you have? Yeah. So with, um, you know, people that already know about feedback was, uh, we've always traditionally been using buyer seller messaging, which is sending the messages through emails, which you can customize. And then with the review request button that came out six months ago, um, there wasn't a way to automate it unless you use a Chrome extension, right? And for people that don't know Chrome extension, you have to install in your browser. Your browser has to be open, right? And then it has to run in the background. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of inconvenient, I would say, right? Because it requires, you know, you to do have a few things set up and then you can't really track like open rates. You can't track how many you send. You can't filter it. You can't send it during time of day. Um, so we've been working on developing a solution for this. And now um, we have a solution where we can automate the review request button without a Chrome extension and it gets sent through the back end, and we can now use it with, the campaigns with feedback was meaning you can you know send it any time of the day you want um, set like how many days after uh, shipped or delivered uh, you can even do like exclusions right so if, with the refund data and the return data things that we have you can try to you can prevent sending those messages to those type of orders so there's a huge benefit there and it's just really exciting how we have this functionality now and you know a lot of other tools are still using the Chrome extension. So I think um, a lot of sellers would be very happy to start using this now. And then they have two options. They can either use buyer seller messaging traditional way, or they can use um, our new review quest, um, functionality. I think now it's the time where all the sellers should uh, run to Seller Central and start testing different options they have uh, regarding using follow-up emails and as well the button. So uh, before I let you go, could you please uh, let our viewers know if they have any questions, what's the best way to reach out to you? Um, you can email us at support at feedbackwiz.com and we'll definitely help you out if you have any issues or questions. Um, especially with the, if you're using buyer seller messaging, um, during this whole year, we've been just offering uh, sellers, even if you use other tools, just email us. We'll uh, spend some time. We'll look through your templates, your campaigns, make sure you're compliant because our goal is to make sure that you don't get uh, hit with uh, any type of restriction. So uh, if you have any questions or doubts, um, yeah, just shoot us an email. I'll be happy to take a look at your um, setup for you. Awesome. I'm sure a lot of sellers uh, are appreciating your help a lot. So thanks a lot again, Henson, for coming here today to talk about follow-up emails and we wish you all the best in your business. Thank you so much for having me today. I do hope that this video was uh, interesting for you and you found some useful information. And if you would like to test uh, feedback with software, you can find the links and the coupon codes for discounts below in the description of this video. And now I would like to invite you to watch videos in this playlist because here we collected a few more good uh, presentations about follow-up messages. Also, you will find a uh, few demos of different software tools which are designed specifically for such follow-ups. So enjoy these videos and see you later.